bit about myself and where I'm coming, coming from with, with all this. So, um, I, I, work, I work with Economic Times uh, and uh, I'm a journalist. So, all that I'm going to talk about is from a journalist perspective as that's maybe a, that will be a very different way of approaching data than say a researcher or a, or a scholar or something, anyone else. So, uh, you need to keep that in mind uh, when, when, when uh, you uh, assess everything I say. Uh, so, um, I, I, you know, sessions on representing data and I'll talk a bit about how I approach it and uh, at least uh, some of the principles that I try and follow. Not, it's not successful every time, but kind of, uh, at least this is something that I try to keep in mind every time. And I'll go, go over a bit of the of a, of a slightly more uh, theoretical approach, but I, that's just one slide, I promise. And I'll just talk a bit about what I, what I, what I, uh, what I actually do. Uh, so, uh, this, is, this is the kind of typical way that we started represent, rep, rep, representing data is not really the issue. It's actually the kind of questions that you ask. Uh, it's, 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 it's really the, the theme that you want to explore. It's the kind of idea that you want to kind of uh, uh, ex examine. I mean, it's, uh, I think, uh, you know, so representing data in itself is, is, is actually a secondary <coughs> issue. And I think, and I, as I just mentioned, that, you know, uh, representing data is actually not that hard. You know, many of the most tried and tested ways in which you look at data today, they actually, there's the reason why they're, why they're so common. It's because that's the way that really actually works. That's been tested, that's been looked at. So, you know, it's not really that hard. I mean, we see a lot of uh, fascinating charts, graphics, you know, which are visually very stunning. And they use different kind of uh, visualizations and so on and so forth. But actually, if you want to kind of, you, and you can do that, that's great. But actually, if you want to kind of really look deep and hard at a question and kind of want to explore that issue, uh, it's you can actually just go with a, you know a very simple line graph chart. What's what's important is actually build a narrative around that to so say you know here is the question I'm trying to answer. Here's the data I'm using. Here's what it looks like. Here's what the here's the point I'm trying to make. You know here's this graph. Here's this visual. Here's this visual. Yeah, and, and even I mean I, I don't think this narrative approach, this 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 attempt to kind of uh, uh, build a story around your data changes really with interaction. You know, you have you have today uh, uh, a situation where you can have a web page where you, the user can play around with the data uh, and you know, explore it for themselves. I don't think that really fundamentally changes that user interaction really doesn't fundamentally change the way that you should kind of you as a developer or you as a journalist should kind of uh, uh, work with the data. Because sometimes, you know, if you just throw a chart at somebody, if you just show a map, throw a map at somebody uh, on sanitation, say, and say, you know, here's the data, play, play around for yourself. Chances are, especially that familiar, persons who are familiar with the field, that they really won't know what to do with it, the ideas to explore. So perhaps the way to do it is to kind of say that, you know, uh, Here's the data, here's a map, here's, but here, here are the kinds of interesting things that come out from this. Here's an example. And you know, here's, here's, uh, uh, here, and that kind of seeds for the idea. So this is really the, the, the point here, of, of building a story around the data, or, or of building a story that you can tell. It's not to provide a kind of a finished kind of, you know, uh, thing that, you know, here's the question of trying to answer, here's the, here's the answer. Here's the you know, and, and that's the end of it. It's, it's so that the user can himself or herself kind of say, oh, that's interesting, but what about this? What about that? And that's, that's really the, the kind of uh, the, the issue here is, that's what, uh, that's what building a narrative does. It, it kind of uh, provides a kind of a framework or a context within which people can kind of, you know, uh, really look at a question perhaps more deeply in a, in a more informed way. So, this is basically, what this is basically a, a kind of a way to find it. Uh, so, these are the simple charts above that we see every day of working everywhere, you know. These are bar charts, line charts. As you go below, this is, these are bubble charts, these are volumes, these are, these are colors. Now, the reason this is arranged this way 
is that the, the and this is this is where the uh, this is where the research shows is that if you want people to make very very accurate assessments of what of two quantities do, like for instance, you want someone to know that this line here is uh, 2.5 and that line there is 2.1. You want to be above here. You want to be here because this is where the brain, the way it perceives information, the way it perceives uh, data, makes the most accurate assessments visually. So you, so these of bar charts, line charts are typically the best way to kind of provide that kind of data. Where if you want the user to say that you know, uh, you want the user to be able to tell that you know this this is 2.2.6 percent, that is 3.1 percent, or something like that. As you go down, the the visual perception becomes more uh, more and more general, becomes less accurate in that sense. So colors, you really can't if, if something is dark red and some, something is orange, the user can't really tell whether that is you know. Two times, or three times, or four times. You can provide a key, but that's really not the intent. So colors is the something typically that that kind of uh, you want to use to uh, distinguish cattle, men and women, you know, uh, Bihar and UP. So that's that's where that's where this is. It's a bit, as I said, it's a bit theoretical, but it's kind of it's kind of important to, to look at this and say that you know, these are the common the commonest approaches that are that people use to represent data: bar charts, line charts, and so on and so forth. Circles, you know, we, we often use pie charts, but they're often not the best way to kind of represent data if you want people to, be, to accurately distinguish between different uh, quantities. Because the human brain can't really perceive uh, distinguish between areas accurately at, at uh, to a great extent. So that's that's really the approach, and uh, and that's kind of uh, what what really is the way that visual representation. How it should work. That uh, you know, you want to distinguish between your data and think about very carefully about how to kind of show that data. And uh, this is one more thing that I want to talk about this, this issue of questions. Now, this is this is this is blog where I work, where I do a lot of work. And basically, the context for this for this for this blog was really you know looking at um, the ship, one of the biggest shifts in the Indian economy in the last 15 years. Which has been a movement of labor outside, out of agriculture and into other non, non, what I call non-farm activities in the, in, the, in the usage. And really, the question, and you know, uh, it's a huge shift that has happened in the last 10 years. And and really, this blog post was looking at trying to explore that shift and kind of trying to understand where these people have gone. Earlier, there was a lot of concern that people were not shifting out of agriculture. You had, you know, a lot of what economists call disguised unemployment, people staying back in agriculture and kind of uh, not being very uh, productive, in, in, which is what which is whatever we call this right? That is that is that is still there, I guess, to some to some extent, but it's changed a lot over the last ten years. And really, this this visual is to kind of look at where this shift has happened. And if there's one sector which really stands up, which has really kind of sucked a gigantic amount of labor outside outside <coughs> agriculture, it is the construction industry. Uh, there's been other industries as well, uh, but it is really in the last, I think, 2005, 2012. You can see that basically construction is the one which has really seen an increase in the share of the workforce over the last uh, eight, nine years. And so that's really what this, what I was trying to explore. And what does that mean really? So if you have a huge amount of labor going into the construction industry rather than manufacturing or trade or organized. Or the organized sector as well. Yeah. So basically, so so that's really so. As I said, simple graph right here. Here's a slightly more uh, perhaps interactive version, um, which kind of lets you kind of explore the the details. You know, uh, where how how this flow happens from whether you're the urban area, the urban area, to the area, which which sector you're going to, which kind of status, you know, whether you're salaried, casual, self-employed, so. That kind of helps you play around with the data. 